Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Today we're going to go back to the basics and talk about how to hear yourself well in a recording session using Studio One. And a lot of this centers around that little blue button, which is called the monitor button in Studio One. Let's set up a session and I'll show you how it works. All right, let's click new. Let's choose from one of the templates. I'm going to go with record now. We'll say just a single track. That sounds lovely. All right, great. And you can see, if you're not familiar, we, these templates actually walk you through all the different things you need to do to get rolling. So it's kind of a guided tour of how to use Studio One. Uh, for me, I'm going to just quickly come in here and make a couple of changes. My microphone is plugged into channel three, so I'm going to select, select that. that. Ah, We've already encountered a bit of the problem. So if you're brand new to recording, or even if you've done it for a while, you know that when you plug your microphone into your audio interface, or maybe it's just a USB microphone, and you fire up whatever recording software you're using, when you go to record, sometimes it sounds like this. Testing, Testing. hey, hey one, one, two. two. So, there's, so there's, it's like a slapback delay that's happening. So you, it's, you can try, I'm sure plenty of people try to just record with it, um, but it's super annoying. Like imagine trying to keep time and I'm like, here I am, like it just, everything slows down. It's, it doesn't make sense. When you're playing live uh, at a gig and you ask the sound engineer to give you more of yourself in the monitor, it comes through instantly, right? There's no noticeable like latency, which is the word to describe what's happening. So what is happening here? Is Studio One broken or is it supposed to work that way and how do we fix it because obviously we can't really get anything done with this. So there are a couple of ways to think about this but first let's talk about what monitoring is. So monitoring you'll hear that term a lot and it it can be a little confusing because the speakers in our studios are called studio monitors. Uh, monitoring can mean hearing things on speakers, but it can also mean hearing things on headphones. And specifically what I'm talking about here is how we monitor as in pay attention to, like, like if you're a doctor and you tell, you know, you go to the nurse's station, you say, I need you to monitor this person's vitals. I need you to pay attention to what's happening. So this is, we want to monitor what's happening in the recording and hear it ideally in our headphones while we're recording, right? So we need to monitor that. So if we look over here in Studio One, as is the case with most places in Studio One, if we just hover our mouse over these buttons, it'll tell us what they're each for. This is the record button, and this is the monitor button. So if I just click this one, it lets, it lets me, me hear, hear what's, what's coming, coming into, into, this into this channel. channel. So it's, so like, it's a like a hot, hot mic, mic, a live, live thing. Mic. And if I press this, it record enables and also turns on the monitoring because that's the default way that most people are going to want to use the software. They want to press record, they want to hear it, and they want to record. The problem is the way we're monitoring right now, it's taking a lot of time for the signal to get into the computer, to come through Studio One, and to come back out. So how do we fix that? There are a couple ways to do that. First way is to just mess with our buffer settings. So if we open up Preferences, and we come to the Audio Setup tab here, there are two places that can affect what our input and output latency are. Studio One's kind of cool because it gives you, it tells us that our input and output latency is 27 plus 26. So it's over 50 milliseconds, which is why it's that generally something around 10 milliseconds or under I can handle, but when you start getting in several several dozen milliseconds, it's hard to make music that way. So the device block size is here, and then if we click on Song Setup, whoops, sorry, uh, if we click on Processing tab up here, we can also adjust this Dropout Protection setting. So we're able to, we have two places, and that can be a little bit confusing. So the idea here is this is how many samples we're telling the, the computer to use, or to kind of use as a buffer. So we use that term buffer a lot. It's literally bits come in and then bits come back out, right? Sampled audio comes in, sampled audio comes out. This is how much kind of uh, head start we're giving the computer to do what it needs to do to process it, to convert it, to send it back out, right? And the higher this number, the longer the latency. So if I change it to like 4096, you can see the latency jumps up to 96 milliseconds in and 96 out. So we're almost at 200 milliseconds round trip latency, which we can also see over here, it's actually 285 milliseconds once we incorporate the 
dropout protection here. So one of the things that Gregor recommends, and uh, this seems to work well, is to set your device block size fairly small, like maybe 64 samples. And then you can just adjust your dropout protection low enough to get a latency that feels good. So right now it's still at 150 milliseconds, but if we drop it down to say low, now our round trip latency is at 16 milliseconds. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, if we go down to minimum, it drops all the way down to 10. So this is going to have to do with what type of interface you have. I'm using a USB mixer here uh, that has USB just it generally is a fairly slow um, protocol. So it doesn't just have a very quick latency no matter what you set. If you're using like one of our quantum interfaces with Thunderbolt, then this can get down to like a millisecond, which is bonkers. Even at the low setting here, with an audio round trip latency of 10 milliseconds, this should feel fine. So let's click this on and see. Check, one, two, check. Hello, hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. That's coming through just fine. Um, I can deal with that. So that's the first way to deal with your latency that you're hearing is to just adjust those buffer settings. Both of those, the lower you go, the more taxing it is on your computer, but the faster the audio comes through. Now, the second way that you can do this is by dealing with what we call the green Z. Now, this is this was really confusing to me. I didn't really understand this until just a couple of years ago. But if we come back over to our preferences, you'll notice there's there's a setting here. So there's this says monitoring latencies 16.6 milliseconds with our current settings, and then low latency 10.8 milliseconds. And you'll see this green sort of Z thing is lit up. That means if we turn on this green Z, which is like a low latency monitoring mode, it'll take this down to this. So what we were actually just hearing was 16 milliseconds, which didn't feel super great. It felt okay, um, but I was noticing that even as I was talking, it was a little bit slow. If we zoom in here on our main output, you'll notice that there is a green Z here. If we click on that, it's not green now, but when we click on it, it becomes green. And if we check our latency now, it'll be decidedly quicker. So this is, this is with the green Z on, and then when I turn it off, it's just got a little bit more latency to it. It's a little bit further behind my voice. Uh, and that is, that is a really cool feature inside of Studio One. So what that's doing is it's kind of cutting out any intermediate, any, any intermediate processing and making it as quick as it can from input to output so that you hear it right away. Um, this is really great for, it'll, it'll bypass any plugins that are causing latency. It'll do kind of some under the hood stuff to make your life a lot easier. So a lot of folks, especially if you're monitoring through like Ampire as a guitar amp plugin, the green Z is a way to get an even quicker latency so it feels more natural and more like real life. The final way to deal with latency is to do what I do and use it a piece of hardware to monitor yourself and then let Studio One just do its thing without needing to monitor quickly at all. What do I mean? I'm actually sitting here in front of a mixer. So it's a Studio Live mixer from Personas. And if you're familiar with mixers, you know that I could plug a microphone into this and I could plug a set of headphones into this or run it to a stage wedge at a gig. And as soon as I sing into the microphone, I hear myself coming out of the wedge, right? There's no perceived latency there. It's just instant. Well, guess what? That's how it works in a studio as well. So what I can do is I can plug my microphone in. I can put my headphones on and hear myself coming right out of the mixer right away. And I can do that all day without needing any computer plugged in at all, right? I'm just listening and hearing myself. If I want to record, I can fire up Studio One, plug the mixer into Studio One via USB, set the input of that channel, and I can record my microphone without having to listen to what it sounds like in Studio One. How do I do that? Well, if right now, let's say I'm listening to myself on my mixer, but I come up here and I press the record button. It turns on the monitor button, which brings in that latency. Well, guess what? I can turn that monitor button off. So now you can see Studio One is hearing my voice. You can see it on the meter there. And if I press record, it's going to record my voice, but we're not hearing it until we it's play record my voice until we play it back. So what is this? This is because we disconnected the monitoring in Studio One from the actual ability to record. So this is how I use Studio One. If you've seen any of my recording videos for probably the last decade, this you'll notice my monitoring is almost never on because I can hear myself through my mixer if I plug in some headphones and listen, and then Studio One can hear me as well, and I don't have to worry about latency. So I could do something like this. I could open up Studio One. I could set dropout protection to maximum. 
I could even set the device block size to like 1,024. And now my latency is, you know, over 150 milliseconds. If we listen to it here, there, there is, is quite, quite a, a bit, bit of, of latency, latency here. here. But if I turn off that monitoring button, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm hearing myself instantly from the microphone through the mixer. And then Studio One is kind of an afterthought it's getting the recording later question people will ask is well does that mean that my recordings will all be out of time no interestingly enough the latency comes from just the computer processing things to get it back out to you but everything you like if i sing on the downbeat of a measure it's going to be recorded exactly at that spot um, so the latency is really just a matter of the slowness it takes for the system to get it back to your ears now i hope that in a few years, the computer processing will have gotten to a point where latency is never something we even have to think about. But as it is right now, um, it is something that you have to at least pay attention to. That's one of the reasons why I use a mixer, and I don't know if I could ever go back to playing the latency game with clicking things and adjusting buffer settings all the time. Nothing wrong with that, but because I do mostly recording with microphones and instruments, I don't do a lot of MIDI programming where I need the latency to be quick. I don't do a lot of playing guitar through Ampire. I usually like mic up an amp over there. Um, so I end up not needing the low latency mode on almost ever. So I just record right through my mixer. So since that's my workflow, the mixer works really well for me for that. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. I know talks like this aren't super exciting and they can be a little confusing. Um, but one final thing you should know is there's a setting. If we click on this wrench inside the arranger, this is a setting that uh, I disable for my system. So monitoring follows record. That means when I press the record button, it also presses the blue monitor button for me. I don't want it to do that because I don't need to monitor through Studio One. So now when I click the record button, it just clicks the record button. The monitor button is left alone. I can still click it if I want to and get, get some, some latency, latency, but otherwise I don't have to. Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.